What's up everybody? I'm Stan and welcome to Detail Comics where we go over comics in detail. This is Ira Reviews, a show where I go over a comic book, its art, its story, give you my impressions and let you know whether it's something to go back to the shop for or not. Today we're going to be talking about Civil War 2 number 8. So the quick answer to this is no, don't read it. <laughs> and that's coming from a place where I have realized over the period of time where I've been reading this entire story that there is a lot of different things that don't really make sense and there's it's just not necessarily a great story altogether. But let's run through the story itself and see where we go. So to begin things, what we're doing is we're picking up where we left off in last issue. And if you remember last issue, Tony Stark was fighting Carol Danvers on the steps of the Capitol building in defense of Miles Morales. And Miles Morales is in like a zero point energy bubble that Carol can't penetrate. And it's just really those two going at it. The interesting thing about this is that Maria Hill has a shield helicarrier just kind of sitting in orbit of this entire thing with the entire Ultimates team as well as the team of Alpha Flight ready to kind of jump in at a moment's notice. However, her the orders from Carol Danvers were to stand down, so Maria Hill's like, nope, stand down, she's going to take care of this. We can't have an entire superhero team or gr a group of superheroes fighting on the steps of the Capitol building. The thing is that that doesn't necessarily mean that Carol's reining things in. You know, she's unleashing powerful cosmic blasts all over the place and ultimately coming close to killing Captain America herself. So it's just one of those things where this kind of giant spectacle of a story, it just boils down to really good art from David Marquez about smashing each other in the face. On the other side of that, we actually see that the Inhumans still have Ulysses, who gave them the warning to, you know, like, have, you know, have her stop. You know, Tony's going to push her too far. Things are going to end up really poorly. And... Ultimately, he's back into his catatonic kind of future preservation state where he's looking out into the future and seeing exactly what's going to be happening. Uh, however, they can't really contact him. They can't tell him, you know, what's going on in real time, and he can't tell them what's going on in his future visions. Next, we jump back right into the depths of this fight and it's still frustrating on every single level as Carol finally unleashes this hammer fist kind of blow that just crushes Tony Stark and casts him out of his own suit and leaves him falling to the ground. It's at this point in time that Ulysses' powers go from, you know, like Super Saiyan to Super Saiyan God level because evidently now everyone involved in this conflict gets drawn into his future visions and he tells them that it's not just a vision of the future, it is of the futures, like as in potential futures. And what we see is a scene that looks like like it's going to be associated with Monsters Unleashed, which is, you know, it's the next event that's coming out next month. Of course, they're going to advertise that in a comic book. And then you've got another one that's the X-Men after the IVX war. Uh, you've got another situation where there's like a giant sentinel and there's a whole bunch of people on like pikes, which is kind of like gnarly. Uh, you've got another situation where you've got a really cool scene of Thor fighting Loki and uh, Thor has Mjolnir back. So that's pretty interesting, too. Uh, there's a War of the Worlds in humans kind of thing. There's just a whole bunch of stuff going on that just seems like it's giving us a little bit of foreshadowing for things that Marvel's going to be coming down the pipeline. That's a little frustrating <laughs> because it doesn't really show any kind of depth and there's no real kind of perception that this is, has any kind of consequence for any of these individuals that are sitting here. You know, even the Age of Ultron one with Carol Danvers crying in front of it, it just doesn't really do anything for me, period, as to where things are going to go in the future. And at that point in time, we see eternity itself if you've been reading the Ultimates, which have tied directly into Civil War II, supposedly, Eternity is chained outside of the Marvel Universe. And Eternity, unchained, comes and descends down and brings Ulysses into the, the cosmic entity level. And so he basically just goes, you know what, guys? I'm a little bit too powerful for you. Peace. I'm done. And he flies off. So this is a character that was created for specifically this event, he lasted eight issues and a few different tie-ins, and now he is a cosmic being and is never going to be heard from again. God, what a real shit that is. That's, ah, oh, it's terrible, terrible. Okay. But as we kind of continue on with the story, uh, what we see is that everybody's kind of back to normal. You know, Spider-Man's holding Tony Stark in his arms, what we've kind of seen in Spider-Man issue number 10. Uh, just a little bit more of that kind of scene. And then we've got Hank McCoy talking to Carol Danvers. And there is just a lot of ham-fisted, heavy-handed insinuation of what the real true purpose of Civil War II was. And that was profiling. Profiling is bad. And... All of the weight, all of the weight of that message is completely lost by how horrendous everything else has been in this. Because Carol, as the victor of this entire thing, gets the basically bottomless checkbook of the United States president. And it's just, 
it feels so unvalidated her victory in this situation that it just it, it causes me to bubble up with with how frustrated I am with this entire series at large. So when it comes to Civil War II, Civil War II itself as an entire series, despite the fact that there are individual tie-ins, say like Nick Spencer's run on Captain America Steve Rogers, that was okay. Some of the emotional structure of Invincible Iron Man under Brian Michael Bendis, some of the emotional arcs in Spider-Man. Other than some small key points in individual books that we're actually looking to tie into this thing, this has been just a giant crap fest. Whew, I, I just don't see any reason for this to exist, and I feel like if you wanted to go about profiling and you wanted to create something like that, you could do it in a much more organic, much more realistic way that can, pe people can invest in. Because if I ask you, somebody out here watching the video, are you invested in the idea that profiling is poor because of this fight? No. You're like, why don't they have the balls to kill Tony Stark in his entirety? You know, just like eviscerate him. You know, if you're going to do that, just if you're going to kill him off, kill him off. Don't just let him sit on the bench until you've got to bring him back for a movie or something along those lines. Just just kill him and let Riri Williams kind of take that over that mantle. And if you want to come back with a convenient plot device, it's comic books. You can always do that at some point in time, but give it some goddamn gravity. You know, there's just no heft to him if he's just kind of like, oh, I've experimented on my body and I'm in some sort of like uh, coma state. It's just, no, no, screw that. That sucks. And then it's just one of those situations where it's just like everything feels bad about this. There's there's no real reason for you to want to read this ever again. Uh, it just doesn't make any kind of sense. And it was really just a way to kind of advertise, commercialize, and restructure the way that the Marvel Universe sets up. And it was completely unnecessary. They could have just done it in a much more realistic and organic way. So if we're talking about Civil War II number eight, and Civil War II as a series in general, this still isn't over because there's evidently an oath tie-in that was, you know, hopefully it's going to be good because it's written by Nick Spencer, but Civil War II number 8 was just a real terrible story that was laid over by really good-looking art by David Marquez, and honestly, I feel ashamed that I bought the entire thing, but hopefully you guys out there didn't go through the same journey that I did. So I can't recommend this to anybody, and I feel dirty for even having participated. So that's my review of Civil War II number 8, but I want to know what you guys think, so hit me up in the comments down below and we can start that conversation. As always, if you like what you see, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe right there to get more news, reviews, and commentary on comic books, comic book movies, comic book TV shows and games, and anything and everything inside the world of comics.